The Encrypt Act of 2016 is here to help. The IRS website is not. A malware bot is taking over Androids and Bitcoins are being stolen. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for February 17, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Patrons, be on the lookout for a new security episode by Darren Kitchen. It will be on the Patreon feed by the end of the month. If you want early access to extras, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash threatwire. On to the stories. The Encrypt Act of 2016 is being introduced to Congress by a couple of representatives, Ted Liu, a Democrat from California, and Blake Farenthold, a Republican from Texas, on Wednesday of this week. This act, short for Ensuring National Constitutional Rights for Your Private Telecommunications Act, could keep states like California and New York from blocking the sales of encrypted phones, which both of the states are currently trying to do. Now, obviously, some law enforcement officials like FBI Director James Comey are against the use of heavy encryption on phones. Others, such as Representative Ted Leo, want to ensure privacy rights of the American people. The Encrypt Act of 2016 would, quote, remove a state's ability to, one, design or alter the security functions in its product or service to allow the surveillance of any user of such product or service, or to allow the physical search of such product by any agency or instrumentality of a state, a political subdivision, of a state or the United States, or two, have the ability to decrypt or otherwise render intelligible information that is encrypted or otherwise rendered unintelligible using its products or service. Since the act would cover computer hardware, software, and electronic devices and online services, this would be a really big leap forward for privacy advocates like us. Is nothing secret? Well, if they didn't learn last year that they are a target, the second time has us seriously shaking our heads. The IRS electronic filing PIN application site on irs.gov was hit with a series of automated attacks last month. According to a report updated on February 9th, no personal data was stolen and the data used to gain access to PINs was stolen in an external breach. I'm gonna make an educated guess here that the SSNs were probably from the health insurance hacks last year or the OPM hack or maybe even both. 464,000 social security numbers were attempted and 101,000 succeeded on the IRS website. The IRS is notifying affected users via mail and they are flagging their accounts for extra protection. Researchers at Heimdall Security have discovered a malware that is targeting Android phones by way of SMS and MMS messages. The text simply tell the target that they received a multimedia message and to follow the link to view the message. The link takes them to an APK file which, when run, will gain admin rights and access to do many things such as send SMSs, read and receive SMSs, make calls, erase the entire phone, and many more little issues. So the malware, dubbed Mazarbot or Mazarbot, can also give a hacker backdoor access to the phone and allow them to implement a man-in-the-middle attack. To protect yourself from the malware, don't click on suspicious links on your phone via SMS or MMS. Turn off unknown sources, allow installation of apps for, from sources other than the Play Store, which is in the settings. You can also download antivirus, but this one is fairly new, so it hasn't been fully vetted by antivirus apps as being malicious as of yet. You can also keep your Wi-Fi off, which we always recommend, install a VPN, and be very strictly cautious. Almost 900 Bitcoin wallets have been targeted in an ongoing attack that's stolen $103,000 worth of Bitcoin so far. How was this money stolen? The targets used memorized passwords that were sent in plain text through one single hash iteration of SHA-256. Basically meaning it wasn't encrypted very well. So basically, it was easy to crack. So brain wallets use passwords instead of 64-bit generated private keys, and because of that lack of salting, the hashed encryptions were very quick to break into. In a paper that will be presented later this month at the Financial Cryptography and Data Security Conference 2016, researchers used 300 billion potential passwords against brain wallets in an attempt to crack them. Most wallets were drained in just minutes, some within seconds. So if you're a current Bitcoin wallet owner, it is advised to use a properly salted crypto 
cryptographic key instead of a brain wallet password for your bitcoins. Early access to show summaries, behind the scenes pictures, and Darren Kitchen security videos. It's all available for patrons at patreon.com slash threatwire. Plus, when we hit our next goal, we will make an RSS feed. I know you guys want one, so we're trying to get there as fast as we can. Now, if you are already a patron, thank you so much for supporting us. Our show is independent and ad-free because of your help. And if you are a Hush Puppy contributor like these, send us a pic of your furry friends because we love to see your pet pals. They are adorable, we enjoy them, and I hope that they are as in touch with security as we are. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute all over at threatwire.net. With that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.